Hi everyone, welcome back to 52 Drinks in 52 Weeks. This happens right in the middle of the corona quarantine, so you can tell that I'm dressed to work from home, and unfortunately, Gagar and I can't do this together. Next week, we let him do it, and I'll watch along with the rest of you. I'm here today to talk about a very special French product. It is the first French brandy, and no, it's not cognac. It is called Armagnac. It comes from the region of Gascony, which is a bit further south from Cognac, a bit more inland, and it had vines back in the 50th century BC when the Romans planted them. More recently, when Napoleon passed through the region with his soldiers, he planted lots of trees for the shade that his soldiers could enjoy along the way, conquering his way around France. So Armagnac is a pretty, pretty old bring. We have records back to 1310 talking about the making of Armagnac, and the AOC was only found very recently in 1936 which means it wasn't recognized for the longest time, but the laws were already in place. And in 2005, a change was made to have unaged Armagnac to be a part of it. A little more about the making process before we get there. Unlike Cognac, Armagnac is actually only single distilled. It can come from three regions, Bas Armagnac, Haut Armagnac and Tenares. And Bas Armagnac is a fun region because when Phylloxera struck, it decimated the region of Cognac. It established Scotch as the supreme drink of the nobility in Europe. Bas Armagnac survived all this because they had sandy soil, which was not very conducive to this mite. But it was too small a production to matter in the scheme of things. Back to today, in the appellation with 1936, you have 10 grapes allowed. pre phylloxera the Fol Blanche, which is always there, is still, is still around. Baco is another one, and Ugni Blanc. And all three of them come together to make you these wines that are very sour, similar in cognac. These very sour, that means high acid wines with low alcohol, are really suited to make Armagnac or cognac. You start distilling them, and distillation stops in the region of Armagnac on the 31st of March. You can't go beyond that. Now, back in the day, you have to remember, farmers would have to sit, sit with their pot stills and distill over weeks, maybe sometimes months. It was a long process. There were the heads, hearts, and tails to separate. It was pretty cumbersome. When the column still came along, it was much easier because you could do it in one go, in one very compact apparatus. Not only was it fast, these were shorter stills. So unlike vodka, which you distill again and again to make it purer and free from congeners, here you had shorter column stills, which means the final spirit was fairly heavy and rich. So that's why a lot of people will tell you that Armagnac actually is much richer than cognac. It might have other congeners, but here's the trick then, that when you're distilling in the short column still, it's quicker, it gets you more flavor, and you can choose how you go about it. Now, these stills were so easy to transport that people had the mobile and they were named. Now, farmers were so superstitious or picky that when they had a certain, I don't know, Nicola or a Martha, the name of a still, the, these were all traditional Armagnac, uh, al uh, Alambic Armagnacais rather. So they all had names and farmers would pick one by names and they would make sure the same Nicola or Martha or whatever would turn up at them again and again every year and that made them really special. So that's how Armagnac was distilled. There's not really the concept of head, heart and tail here because it's a bit mixed up, but you know how to make the cut. It's all about the experience. And when you get the final beverage, it's all about the aging. And aging here happens in the local oak, which is from Gascony, the forest. In the beginning, you use a wider grain and slightly more toasty oak for the first two years. And later on, you transfer to the smoother oaks for round aging, always 400 liter barrels. One more point of interest here is that long ago, Armagnac was never aged. It was always an unaged product, and the Dutch used to ship it. We used to come with these glass containers called the Jean Dams or the Demi Johns or the Jean Dams, and they stopped supplying them around the 1710s, 1730s, and that's when the French had to move to oak and then they found the consumers like this sort of caramelized, nutty, aged, colored taste, and the oak kind of stuck around. Today with Armagnac, at least the younger ones, you're allowed additives. You're allowed caramel for sure for color. There's something called boise, which is roughly translated as oak flavoring. But if you get aged Armagnac, which is much finer, you will not have all these additives. So the idea is you can have good Armagnac with some additives or without. And the aging is also very controlled. So one year is for VS, six years for EXO, or DAJ, meaning or out of age or really beyond age. Uh, you'd look at 10 years and beyond. You can go up to 20 years. Single harvest Armagnacs are labeled so. So there's quite a lot of uh, regulation around it. 2005, we even have unaged Armagnac being allowed back into the system. Remember the original system before the, the Dutch took it away and now it's come back. So you can even have unaged pure white spirit. And because it's a shorter column still, as I told you earlier, the spirit has a lot of flavor. So you can actually enjoy an unaged Armagnac for all its flavors. 
Well, on to the tasting now. What I have here is a house called Daros. It was bottled by the, the La Serrat and it's a 943 bottle, but it does not age in glass, remember that. So it does not mean that today in 2020, this is, you know, over almost uh, almost 60 years old. That's, uh, well, almost 80 years old, but that's not the case. This was possibly bottled in about the uh, Exot category and a little longer perhaps, uh, maybe Ordage. But remember, this was barely seven years into the appellation being created, so it would have been all relatively new then. But I can tell you one thing, they are great value for money products because if you were to buy a whiskey or a cognac for the same year, you would pay a significantly larger amount because Armagnac is lesser known. And yet it is more boutique than any of those other products. Without further ado, let's try them. By the way, don't use a snifter if you can avoid it. Try and get one of these glasses. The tulip shape works or there's this nice chimney glass which you can find. And I'm gonna pour a little to myself. Go. Gagan, this one's for you, Sahil, you as well, and to everybody who works in the hospitality industry who's been seeing us through. Hang in there, guys. I know it's really tough right now, but things will get better. I'll get into shirts, you'll get back into uniforms and be back at work. But meanwhile, let's taste this and cheers to all of you. Wow. So this Armaniac from the taste of it. You have primary fruit characters, but you have the secondary characters that come from the from the uh, from the oak, which is definitely more prominent here. And then the tertiary characters, the mushroom, a lot of umami, the forest floor, a rancio note that you find in a lot of these aged Oh Wow! And the colors gone from being brick red at one point maybe to almost a an ochre brown. <coughs> it's a it's a heady spirit though. <coughs> Wow, lots of spice, vanilla, butterscotch. It's a really smooth drink. I think it really works as an after dinner drink as it's been for ages. But today, remember, Gascony is called the duck and fowl country. It's also the region that gives us the best foie gras in France. So trust me, if you're having a lot of those dishes, I don't think mine and pairing an Armagnac next to it would be all that bad. I would even like it with the, the Cuba Weiss, maybe not this one, but maybe something slightly younger. Have it in cocktails or do your Alexanders and sidecars and see how they come out. But I think it's more it's more nuanced a product with a lot of heavy uh, composition on the mouth. So you would enjoy the mouthfeel, you'll enjoy the flavors. So for the textural quality, I would rather, I would suggest you have it at the right temperature, but by itself. So guys, this is Armagnac, all rounded up for you. Gagan, I missed you. Um, so till next time, guys, 52 drinks in 52 weeks. This is Armagnac. If you drink something at home, please share with us what it was. Share a small video or a clip. Let us know what you think of it. And thank you for watching. Cheers, guys.